Hi, my name's Keith Cooper and I'm a professional photographer. I'm an architectural photographer and I do other stuff as well. But if you ask me photography I do, it's architectural. What does that actually mean? The reason I'm going to sort of put this short video together for today is because somebody who was doing a photography course uh, wrote to me and asked about aspects of being a, an architectural photographer. Um, I've written an article a, a while ago, uh, which I'll put in the links, which covers a bit more background on this. But this is some of the things I think that if you want to do architectural photography professionally, some of the things you need to consider. Now, this is aimed at people who are just getting into photography, uh, even professional photographers who may think, oh, I could branch out, I can do that. Um, you know, it, what does it actually take? What does it involve? Um, well, the obvious bit is you know, sort of photographing buildings. Um, that, in a way, is the sort of bit that people think of. Oh, yes, it's pictures of buildings, pictures of striking buildings. Well, first up, as a working architectural photographer, you are unlikely to get that many commissions to shoot genuinely interesting, award-winning, fascinating buildings. Uh, you are much more likely to get to photograph things like this, giant industrial sheds. This particular one here, this was an industrial estate. It's a very utilitarian building. Um, it's typical of the stuff I photograph. Um, shots, this is at De Montfort University. If you've seen some of my reviews, testing of lenses and things, you'll know it's near here and I use it quite often for, for testing that. Some of my photographs, you know, the architects have used them, so um, you know, they like them as well. But in general, you're gonna be photographing dull stuff. Now, how did I get into you know, architectural photography? My background is not photography. I took up photography uh, almost 20 years ago. Um, I've got a scientific technical background doing research and other areas. I was originally um, a geologist, geophysicist. So I've got lots of different things. I do not have photography qualifications. Uh, you don't need them. Um, they can be useful but, and they can be fun to do, but you don't need them. Back quite a few years ago, uh, before I took up photography, um, I went and had a chat with a guy who was at the time, and we're talking at, in the 1990s, a well-known and published landscape photographer. Uh, he published books, was well-known in the field. And I said, uh, yeah, I was thinking of doing photography. And he goes, yeah, what, what about, what would you like to do? And I said, well, I'd love to do landscape photography. And he went, ha, no money in it. And he said, making money from landscape photography is very difficult. He made his money from books and courses and things like that. And it's similar today. You will find that a lot of people who uh, are moderately successful in landscape photography, they have YouTube channels, invariably with far grander production values than I muster here in my office, but yeah, that's another matter altogether. But they supplement the business. It's part of, the photography is part of what they do. And for architectural photography, it's part of what I do. I'm also an industrial photographer, so I do that. Now, you could say industrial photography, in some ways, it's, there's quite similarities to it. In fact, the bits of photography, professional photography, that I don't do, I don't do weddings, for example. Um, I'm not particularly great at photographing people. I can do, I, but I have no interest in it. Uh, when it comes to structures, buildings, construction work, mining, anything like that, even dull buildings like this um, and what's going on inside it. Um, that's the sort of stuff that I'm interested in photographing and you need to have an interest in it. So if you want to do in, you know, architectural photography as part of your work, you need to have an interest in it and you need to have an interest in how to make a dull building look interesting. If you can take a nice photo of a very bland, dull looking building, you've got some of the knack that's needed for it. Ah. But in that bit about landscape and me wondering, and I said this was years before I even took up photography professionally, um, I'd made the mistake of not making what sells as opposed to selling what you make. It's a it's a business problem that many people in small businesses have. 
um, crafting, all kinds of stuff like that. Whereas you have, and, and, and selling prints. Now I've done lots of videos on the business of selling prints and stuff like that. But essentially it is about making stuff that people want to buy rather than making the stuff that you want to make and then hoping that somebody buys it. There's a very big difference for it and that comes into architectural photography as well. You've got to produce the shots that people want. Different people buy it. So you need to know, much as in selling prints, who buys architectural photography? Who commissions architectural photography? Well, the key for that is to follow where's the money in it. The money in it is usually in the developers. So to be the developers of a site like this, they will want photos. You might think, oh, well, architects, they'll want photos. But most architects are not that wealthy. Um, you, you tend to get this idea of the big, rich architectural practice. Some of those do indeed commission photography, uh, but it is far less often than you think. And I'll come back to commissioning photography a bit later. But uh, in general, a lot of architects I know can't afford to get pictures like this unless they're doing them for their building a website and they just want a few nice pictures for it. Um, I'm a member of the RIBA and I know quite a lot of architects. So you know, I will go out and I will do some photos and I'll, I'll get them some photos for it and I'll take them some nice photos of jobs. Most architects, by the way, also work on dull, tedious projects. Um, there, you know, there may be some interest in them, but they are not award-winning buildings. Um, people get a, a wrong idea about architectural photography and think that it's all about photographing stuff that looks great and has won awards and things. It is not. It is far from it. The bread and butter of it is photographing ordinary stuff and making it look interesting. What's interesting? Well, that's partly defined by the client and what they want. Um, so. These are classic shots um, from, I'll, I'll, I'll cover a bit about the technology in a, in a moment because in, in a way that's not quite so important. But here, both of these shots are taken with shift lenses um, to keep the verticals straight. Key element of architectural photography is that vertical lines in the structure are parallel in the shot that you've taken. So buildings don't lean, they don't lean backwards, they don't lean forwards, they are dead straight. And that's very easy to do if you use shift lenses. But that's the sort of picture that the architect likes. What about the pictures that somebody in the marketing department may like? This is when you're allowed to use wacky angles. Um, now, verticals a little bit off, that's carelessness in setting your camera up. Verticals way off like that, that's done for effect. Um, this is the sort of picture that the marketing department may actually want to put in a brochure. This is the sort of picture that the architect will go, no, no, I, I just don't like it. So remember who you're doing the pictures for. So whilst most pictures I take, on a, on a job will be of this style, this style. I will do a few at interesting angles. Just as an aside, if you're looking around at other at photographers' websites, professional photographers, if you're curious about this, and you see any of them claiming to do architectural photography, unless almost all the examples of what they call architectural photography are dead straight like this. They are not architectural photographers. Anyone can call themselves that because they've taken some pictures of some building for somebody. The difference you will soon see if you look between people who say, yes, we do architectural photography and people who are general purpose commercial photographers. The other thing I say to somebody, if you're, you know, to a client, yeah, or, so, or somebody I'm advising, if you're looking for an architectural photographer, if you see photos of brides and portraits on the front page of the website, take that as a big hint that architectural photography is not their thing. Um, it's, it's straight away, you know, if you see people, it's particularly brides on the front page of a website, that's it. Now, I would say if you're going to be serious about it, at least build yourself a separate website and don't mention the word weddings in it at all. The two are very far apart. Both professional photography, both need different skill sets, but they do need the skills. But what does it come down to in the things, the key elements that you need for to be an architectural photographer? Well. 
I'll start off with one that pe most people think I would always start off with, and that's the technology. And that's learn how to use tilt shift lenses. Um, yes, you can do it in software, but knowing how to use shift, how to use tilt on occasions, and it's probably not as often as you think, but knowing how to use lenses like this to change the representation of space in a photograph is a key element. It's one of the reasons I test lenses on this site here. I know it so well that I know that slight differences in setup, I know how I can change the view of things. This single point perspective here is relatively unusual and it's quite a striking image of the building. Uh, that is indeed exactly the scene I saw when I took the photograph, but it's not necessarily how a lot of people would recognise it. as a, They wouldn't see those proportions, um, but that's all the sort of stuff you can do it. But do a range of pictures because you can never be sure what a client wants. So this, I'm using a DSLR here, I could use a mirrorless, doesn't really matter particularly on it. Uh, lots of megapixels always helps because architecture is something with fine detail. Also helps as a good understanding of the technology in sharpening your images, how to change your resolution, how to get detail, how to correct for lens aberrations and things like that. All of that stuff is the technical side, comes in making great technical pictures. But great technical pictures on their own is not enough. Just because you can take pictures, that's not it. The real key if you want to get into architectural photography is the marketing side. It's like any professional photography. It is mostly marketing. The fun bits are when you go out and take some pictures, usually. And the dull bits are when phoning people around are just chasing things up to try and go. It's the marketing that makes it work. The marketing is in a way what turns it from an interesting hobby into a proper job. Um, that's it. If you want to be an architectural photographer, you want to be a professional photographer, learn and understand all elements of marketing. Um, I know it doesn't seem fun, but that is what gets you the work and it makes a real big difference. Another area I'm going to mention on it is technical, evolving technical changes. Be ahead of the game. Now, I don't use drones. Um, I do have a 28 foot or 8 metre mast, elevated mast for photography. Um, drones is one thing, that is an area more people are asking for it, but it's quite a specialised area of photography in itself, comes with a lot of expenses and also the skills needed and uh, you know, licensing to be able to do it properly. So it may be something that gets farmed out, but for the stills photography, keep an idea, an eye on coming advances. So basically, um, I, you know, I normally can retire in a few years, so I haven't got to worry too much about this. But if I had 20, 30 years of work, of business ahead of me, I might seriously be looking at, you know, how are AI techniques going to influence this? Uh, what other ways, what other technologies are coming along? The real key is to let the technology changes pick off your competitors, not you. And if I look back to the change from film to digital, which is when I took up pho photography professionally, that is what makes a real difference. Um, there were a lot of people who had got by as film photographers for years, never properly adapted to digital. They had their way of doing things that worked. Digital came along and that's it. Um, I had people at the time view me with suspicion because I didn't offer film services. I was you know, totally digital from the start um, and that was a change that really had a big sort out. Changed the photography industry an awful lot. Phones have done the same thing. Yeah. Technology that could take phones. At the moment, for the kind of images I produce, the big images, for big images, prints like this in the background here, for big stuff like that, this camera technology beats it. But phones are still advancing, as is computational photography. So how much do you need to take for your photograph? How much will renders uh, become indistinguishable from real photos? How much will an architectural practice be able to very simply go, here are the plans for the building. I want to see this building with a crowd of people outside on a summer evening. 
Oh, and I want, oh, I want a little bit of cloud. Oh, I want it slightly earlier in the evening. I want it slightly later in the evening. And very quickly, an image will come up, which in a few years will look indistinguishable from something you took on a camera. Um, now, when that becomes commonplace, well, the photographers who only produce pictures like this are going to have difficulties. Now, I'm hoping that there is for a good few years yet opportunities to go out and take pictures with real cameras, whatever you choose to use. But just keep an eye on those changes in technology because they will come. Um, they never come quite as quickly as you expect, but over time they happen much more than you ever thought they would. And that's, that's key for it. And one last little bit about architectural photography. If you look in magazines like the Reba Journal and various other architecture today and things like that, you may get an idea that architectural photography is lots of grand pictures that look great. Look at the people. There are only a few people who do them. Architectural photography is very much at the high end based on who you know to get you the work. Your technical ability counts for a little in it. It may have counted a little earlier on, but at a certain point, all the people getting key architectural photography jobs of big projects and things like that are people who know the right people to get asked. Now, does that render all of the stuff I've said up to this point irrelevant? Of course it doesn't. Um, I get asked as now. <laughs> I may only get asked to photograph a shed um, somewhere, but it's a nice looking shed. It was a nice day. And the people with the shed who built the shed were very happy with it. Just set your limitations initially. But remember that when it comes down to it, if you want to go far in this business, as it stands at the moment, notwithstanding what I said about technological changes, um, doesn't do you any harm to get to know people in the business. And remember that where the money is in development and things, that's where the commissions come in. Um, there's not that much money at the lower end of architecture. So keep it as part of your overall business. Be prepared to change. And there you go. Um, would I take up architectural photography today if I was 25 years younger? Yeah, I think I probably would. Um, yeah, almost certainly because I enjoy doing it. That's the other bit. Do something you enjoy. Anyway, I hope this video has been of some use. Uh, please feel free to ask questions. Please subscribe to the channel if you found it useful. It's appreciated. And uh, thanks for watching.